Today we're gonna to talk about social media marketing. If you've been looking to build your SMM strategy, but don't know what to look for and what kind of different aspects you should be looking at, well, today I'll be talking about different examples from the platforms, the audiences, and this just general insight into building your SMM strategy. Let's get into it. Okay, first off, let's talk about the goals you should be looking for. SMM is the process of using platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, any other social platform to build relationships, interact with your potential clients or current clients, whatever it is, it's a building relationship thing. That's what you want to do on social platforms. Now, businesses can use this to create a community, answer questions, or build topical authority. But basically, you're trying to build a specific type of relationship with your customers, which is a, a bit more personal than your average ads or your average uh, uh, SEO campaign. It's really on a on a personal level. So you're actually talking to the customers. You're showing them things. They're see, they're seeing your, your the experience of your business and stuff like that. Now, if you tend on using social networks for paying ads as well then you could do a lot more, but all of a sudden it's a different game. But if you would, at this point, you'd be able to showcase your products, make promotions, build lead generation campaigns, and do a lot more than just build a relationship. But building a relationship is a very good practice and it's, it's more for the long term because you won't really get a lot of leads and a lot of purchases out of social media marketing per se. But when you add the paid advertisement section, that's when it becomes a bit more, let's say, lucrative on a short term basis. Now, a great way to take advantage of social media platforms is to use giveaways, ebooks for the purpose of selling your products, but actually getting the people to know you before they buy the product. Because it's just like a, a relationship, actually. When you're in the street and you see someone that you maybe find interesting, you don't go to them and say, hey, you wanna go out with me? Or, hey, you wanna marry me? You ask them something, you ask them for a question, you ask them the time, whatever it is, you, you, ask, you, you build up a slow conversation, and at some point, you might ask for something more, like for example, a phone number, another date, or whatever it is. You know, you might say something like, oh, we should grab a coffee some time you know that's that's how it works naturally now obviously you can push you can be pushy you can be really straightforward direct in the beginning but it won't always work and honestly it can ruin your reputation so that's not something we want to go towards just like that now most social platforms offer a type of pixel or something that can track your data across your analytics platform and stuff like that be sure to implement that it's a very powerful tool that will give you a lot of insights on your audience. Now, one of the main benefits of social media marketing is that it allows businesses to reach a large segment of people easily. With billions of users on social platforms, businesses can target groups, segments, they can find specific people with specific interests that may like their products or may have more chances of liking their products or services. But that comes over time because you need to give the platform a kind of a time frame for them to actually dig into the aspects of your product and, and see. So basically they make tests with their algorithm showing your, your product to different people. And when they start seeing that, oh, uh, 10 people like this and they all have the interest of maybe uh, shopping for discounts online, then they'll put them in that specific segment. Now you can also run retargeting campaigns. That's one of the most powerful things on social platforms. So when you run an ad and you show it to a specific person, you can show it to that same person over and over again. Like those little ads that follow you around around the internet, well, that's, that's what retargeting ad is. And you can also take your specific audience that you found after building up that data and run a campaign on similar people that are just like these people, well, just like, they have similar <laughs> categories of interests and that can help you target specific people even more and find even, even more relevant audiences. This is huge because it helps you build visibility and also brand recognition. Now, you know how they say that you need to see an ad about seven times for you to actually purchase something. Well, I'm not gonna say it's seven exactly, but this is a good roundabout number to, to base your calculations on because when someone might see it on the first time and buy something, and someone might see it the 10th time and buy something. So when you average it out, it should come to about four, five, six, seven, something like that. And basically the real power of using that number is just that you need to show your product to people, the same people, many times. And that will help you be top of mind next time they think about or need a product that's similar to yours. Now I wanna talk about the types of social media. I'm gonna go really briefly on them and just cover some of the things that I see that most people don't really talk too much about. And this is just an overview for beginners that wanna see if they prefer to go into social media or into SEO or, you know, remember that this is an all in one course based on all the different categories that I've specified in digital marketing. 
Now, it's not an extensive list, but it's a path that I've created for people that want to uh, find themselves on in the digital marketing world and they don't know where to start, they don't know what they should be doing and they try to do everything, but in the same time, they should try to focus on something. Yes, you should try to expand your knowledge on different aspects, but at some point you'll want to narrow down. And that's when I talk about the digital marketing strategic path that I created in this video that you can check out right there. And you can also check the videos in this playlist which cover all of the different topics that I've spoken of in the video that I just proposed right here. Okay, now let's talk about Facebook first. What do people go on Facebook for? They want to see the feed. They want to see their families and friends, what they're doing, what they're up to. Basically, it's like a newscast. Some people go to CNN, some people go to CBC, some people go to Fox News, some go to TVA, TVQ, but some people just watch Facebook news. So Facebook is kind of like the default platform that you pretty much need to have a Facebook page, but at the end of the day, it might not be the best place for your audience. So you want to have Facebook and you also want to have something else, at least two. But if you're just starting out, you might just want to stick with one so that you do it correctly in the right way. Because you can post the same posts on the same platform, but at the same time, that's not very specialized and it's not really personalized. You want to have different content for different platforms because they're different audiences and they want different things from that platform. Now, Instagram. Instagram is a bit more of an artistic and aesthetic kind of platform. The most prominent posts there are images and short videos. You don't have much space to write long posts like Facebook, so you keep it short, you put tags, and you have a nice image. That's what you get on Instagram. Now, people will interact with these visual posts by liking, sharing, commenting, and following. There are also shoppable products, so that's a really good way to increase your purchases if you want to add a shoppable product section on your Instagram, then it's an additional channel for you. When people are looking for visually pleasing images like food or cars or mountains, stuff like that, ocean sites, then they go to Instagram and that's where they satisfy their need for beautiful things. Okay, now on to Pinterest. This is the only platform I actually use in my personal life. Uh, I don't use it much, but I like using it because it gives me a lot of insight on different purchasing decisions and stuff like that. So let's say you go to a store and you want to buy a watermelon. Where do you go to find out the best answer? You could go to Google, but I know that on Pinterest, I'll get the most relevant questions and the most relevant things to look for in the watermelon. So it'll tell me how to choose a right watermelon or if I want a watermelon that's more juicy or more crunchy or whatever it is, it'll give me charts, it'll give me graphs, it'll give me images, all that and more. If there's a product that's related to it, for example, uh, little spoons that, that can take out like a watermelon, like circles or make dices out of the watermelon, then it'll even show me stuff like that. So that's how it influences your purchasing decisions as well. Because a lot of people on Pinterest they make purchasing decisions and that's what the research actually says. It shows that Pinterest is actually somewhere where people go to think about what they want to buy or inspires them to buy something. That's why a lot of people go there for DIY things and how to do this and that because it's a very informative platform. Now one of the most important things about Pinterest is that it actually has a search engine which is different from Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and all that. They have a search engine which actually uses a similar algorithm to Google. So in a way, you can use keywords in your Pinterest tags and your in your Pinterest description and it'll work in your favor. So if you run SEO or you run specific keyword related strategies for your site, then you might want to invest in Pinterest as well because you might already have some good keywords and they might also be similar on Pinterest. It's not always the case, but it might be. And at that point, it's a good way to implement something extra on a social platform. But your audience needs to be on Pinterest. So you need to prove that. You need to show that there are a lot of people searching for what you offer on that platform. And if you want to learn more about SEO, you can check out this video, which is number four in the mini series that you're watching right now. Now, the last thing about Pinterest is that it's a very purchase driven platform and there's a lot less competition. So that's something that you could really take for your advantage if you want to use a social platform where there's not too many of your competitors. A lot of companies don't use Pinterest and it's actually a big mistake, obviously, if your audience is on it again. Okay, next is Snapchat. They use a very common marketing strategy, which is scarcity. The fact that videos and images disappear makes it feel like every piece of content is unique and if you open a video and don't watch it to the end, you might not be able to see it again. So it gives you kind of that feeling of, uh, I, I might miss something. Another powerful tool they've used in their platform is the emoji avatar. Everybody's using it and everybody has this kind of avatar that looks like them. 
Also, you might not have realized, but Snapchat is the only platform that uses virtual reality as a as a kind of like their main offer. Because you can actually add ears to your face, you could add uh, glasses, you could add anything on your on your body, on your like a real person. So it actually makes it kind of like a virtual reality tool. Last platform I want to talk about is Google My Business, which is also called now Google Business Profile. This is one of the most underrated platform and misunderstood as well. You have to understand that the posts on this platform are shown in various places where you might miss them easily, especially if you're not a heavy Google user, specifically Google Maps. Also, the fact that posts used to last only seven days was a real reason why people were not posting on it anymore. But they've changed that recently. Well, a little while ago. The funny thing about Google My Business is that people don't actually go there to see your posts like they do on other social platforms. They find them while searching for specific things, which is amazing because they're getting that social network experience without actually realizing it. Now, you've probably seen GMB posts, but might not have known that they are GMB posts. And you probably won't even remember if you think about it right now. But next time you'll go, you'll probably see them. I've seen customers get great results when posting the GMB channel and it really helps them boost their organic traffic. So think about it and mention it to your next client in your proposal or maybe implement it for yourself. Your post can appear in different places. So it can be in a Google search below the reviews where the on the right side where the results show the, ne the name, the, the phone number, the website and all that. Then there's the reviews under them. You can see posts down there. You can also find them in Google Maps when a user searches or clicks a business. Also in the updates section of Google Maps, if you're following that particular business, each post has a limit of about 300 words and only the first 100 words or fewer will be appearing in the posts as, as the knowledge panel. So the knowledge panel is like the feature, the SERP feature, and you don't want to write things that are more important towards the end. So keep your important stuff in the first 100 characters and then the rest, think about it, it might be scratched off. You might not see it unless people click it. So it's kind of like your subject line when you're sending an email. If you want to learn more about email marketing, check out this video. Now you can also include an image, a CTA, which is a call to action, uh, a button or a URL in your GMB posts. So that's something different from, for example, Instagram, where you can't really use links or stuff like that. So you can drive traffic from your post to your website directly with every post. So if you have a new product or a new, I don't know, a new meal, then you can just link to that specific page. Now, last thing I want to mention is be sure to use an automated content calendar. Like for example, Hootsuite or Buffer, these tools increase your speed time from maybe 100%. You can't be posting on every platform every day. Your posts in batch, and then when, when they're created in batches, then you can also add them to the calendar and automate them so that they go out whenever you've scheduled them.